Hello, Burst users. My name is Florence Nguyen Kwong. And I'm Linda Escobar. And we're here with the Center for Early Reading at Amplify. This video provides you with insight on how to administer progress monitoring. The Introduction to Progress Monitoring session will last about 20 minutes. You will then be able to learn more about each individual assessment measure and practice scoring along on your assessment device as you watch the short videos. Progress Monitoring for PM Specialists is the last in the PM Specialist series. This module assumes you've watched the Burst Overview module. If you haven't watched that video, take some time to view it prior to watching this video, as it will provide you with good background info on Burst. Also, make sure you have your handout ready. We will refer to it as we go. In this module, we're going to give you some background on how the Burst algorithm works with progress monitoring data. We're also going to show you why accurate data is so important to Burst and how differences in scoring could lead to completely different lessons. Then we'll show you how to prep to administer progress monitoring and what you need to have ready. We'll take you through the steps to pull up assessment measures on your assessment device and where to locate student materials. And now I'll turn you over to Florence, who will take you through the burst measures. Thanks, Linda. Before we go into the details of scoring accuracy, let's take a few moments to reflect on why you think we should progress monitor students. Remember how BURST works? Each cycle requires that students get progress monitored. The progress monitoring results guide the algorithm to keep generating catered lessons that are very specific to students' needs. The cycle repeats every 10 days. Most of you are probably familiar with the Dibbles assessments. BURST has three additional measures it uses to generate lessons that target the right skills for each group. The DECODE assessment has four sub-measures, you can learn more about each of the assessments by watching the short videos below and then practice going along. Burst and Dibbles measures talk to each other in the Burst system. The Burst algorithm matches the progress monitoring measure to the instruction to determine how much progress each student has made in the nine days of instruction and to come up with the next set of catered lessons. Every other week on the same day, you'll progress monitor to track students' mastery on the skills they have learned in Burst and provide data for the next set of Burst lessons. Progress monitoring data fuels the BURST engine. When you progress monitor accurately and consistently, you ensure that BURST lessons are most strategically aligned to the skills that students need. The progress monitoring data tell us what gains students are making and where they need additional support. Now that you know how BURST uses progress monitoring data to target its lessons, let's take a closer look at how scoring accurately is crucial to generating the right lessons for each group. We know assessments and progress monitoring is a very important part of the BURST machine to group students and to generate lessons. Why do you think it's important to accurately record student responses on Dibbles? Let me show you a few different cases of student responses and suggested instructional next steps. In the Burst Overview module, we took a look at two different students whose nonsense word fluency score at MOI was 29. Turn to page one of your handout. If you are not yet familiar with this Dibbles assessment, or if you need a quick refresher with nonsense word fluency, let me give you a little bit of background. The student is given a page of vowel consonant and consonant vowel consonant words and is instructed to read the words. The educator then scores the assessment. Here, a line underneath the letter marks a sound that was read correctly. Red squares show sounds that were read incorrectly or skipped. Student 1 read the first word as a uh, and hesitated on m, mm, so the assessor marked the m incorrect. Here we see that a line underneath the word shows that the student blended all letters and read the word and not just in the individual sounds. So for example, student two read the first word as um. Burst reads deeper into the measures than simply taking the numerical score of Dibble's probes. Take a look at student one. What error patterns do you notice for this student? What instructional next steps would you recommend based on these response patterns? 
When you're done analyzing student one's response patterns, look over student two's scoring sheet. Student one needs support on letter sound correspondence and blending. Student two can already blend accurately and needs to improve his fluency. Because the burst algorithm looks at response patterns, it is important that the scores accurately show where students are on the reading skills progression. We've gone over how burst continuously uses PM data and picks up specific student response patterns to generate new lessons. Let's walk you through the steps to get ready to administer PM assessments to BIRST students. Now that you have a better understanding of how BIRST interprets data, we'll help you become an expert at administering and scoring the PM assessments. Your first step is to watch the videos for each measure. There are short videos on how to score each of the BIRST measures in the BIRST base under progress monitoring on the training page. Be sure to actually practice scoring the BIRST measures along the video with the students in your demo class. Phoneme segmentation fluency and nonsense word fluency are two of the most difficult assessments to administer, so practice scoring both of these assessments as much as you need to feel confident before assessing BIRS students. Here's where you can get more practice on scoring the Dibbles assessments. I am now going to turn it back over to Linda so she can show you where to find which measure to administer and how to pull it up on your device. Starting on day seven, you'll progress monitor with the measures identified within the group's current lesson plan. You can find it listed here on the 10 day overview, here at the top of the page, and as a final reminder on day 10. The required progress monitoring measures are repeated again on the last page of the burst lesson. We also suggest, as good practice, to check the measures listed on the group's Next Burst tab. You can click it at any time. From the Next Burst tab, you can confirm the student names and progress monitoring probes required. And after you've administered the measures, you can return to the screen to ensure all results have synced. Okay, now that we know who and what to progress monitor, let's go ahead and log in from your mobile device. Tap the M class icon on your home screen to open the assessment app. Log in. Select the class and sync. Or change the class from the black button in the top right corner. Change class. Next, select Burst. Since Burst utilizes both Dibbles and Burst data, you can access all the probes in one convenient place. Select the student. Select Progress Monitoring. From the drop-down menu, select the required Progress Monitoring measure. Tap Assess. Select the next available progress monitoring form. And now you're ready to administer the progress monitoring measure. Be sure to sync all results. The M Class app is designed to store assessment data on your mobile device. Syncing transmits that data to the Amplify servers, where it's stored securely. Our engineers recommend you sync the M Class app at least once daily while you're assessing to reduce the risk of data loss. If you plan to continue progress monitoring, you can sync from the class summary page prior to selecting the next student. And sync. If you're not progress monitoring again right away, best practice is to log out of the M-Class app. Logging out closes the current session and initiates a sync. Okay, let's assume you've completed all progress monitoring measures required by BURST. Now what? 
To confirm a successful sync, return to M Class Home in order to view the Next First tab. The field under the recommended progress monitoring measures displays with the assessment date. No date will be displayed if you did not progress monitor in the required measure or if your sync was unsuccessful. Progress monitoring data helps first determine whether the students are ready to move on or if it should recommend a different approach for the same skills in the next burst of instruction. After you progress monitor, the burst system analyzes the data overnight and translates it into an updated skills report. Student performance data drives the next burst of instruction. If you don't provide an opportunity for the students to demonstrate mastery of the skills outlined in your lesson and on the next burst tab, the next burst of instruction will be created with the assumption that they still need support in that skill. All right, let's take a quick moment to review the steps for burst progress monitoring. First, identify student names and required progress monitoring measures. Next, log into the M Class app. Then select the class, select burst reading, select the student, Select Progress Monitoring. Select the required assessment measure. Select the next available form. Administer the assessment. And finally, sync results and or log out. Thanks, Linda. Let me just check in with our PM specialists for a minute. Where can you find the progress monitoring measures for each group? Here are different places where you can find the progress monitoring measures for each group. As you get ready to start administering progress monitoring, check in with your intervention coordinator to get the details on the progress monitoring plan. The progress monitoring plan is put in place to ensure consistent progress monitoring of students. Your intervention coordinator has set up a repeatable process to make PM administration easier. Make sure that you are clear on when you should administer progress monitoring and where, choose a location that minimizes transition time. Many progress monitoring specialists choose to push into the classroom so they can quickly and efficiently move through students. PM should be administered on the same day of the week every other week. We recommend to PM every other Tuesday or Wednesday so that the new lessons can be ready by the following Monday. And make sure you know which students you should assess in each class. Make sure that each class appears on your device. Sync your device and check. If any are missing, talk to your intervention coordinator. Finally, get the student materials printed and ready. Hopefully you were able to connect with your intervention coordinator and get the important details of the PM plan prior to the session. If so, take a moment to record those logistics on page two of your handout. We went over quite a bit of information in this short video. Here are a few key takeaways for you to consider as you prepare to administer progress monitoring. Assessment accuracy is extremely important for BURST to get the right lessons for your students, so make sure to practice over and over again. With all the day-to-day -day school demands, it's not easy to prioritize PM. It is critical to have a clear plan in place to ensure consistent progress monitoring of students. Be sure to check in with your intervention coordinator and get all the details on who to progress monitor, when in the school day to progress monitor, where to administer progress monitoring, and what weekday. Be sure, most importantly, to sync your device. BURST will not be able to create new lessons unless you sync your data. Thanks for watching this video. Please spend a few minutes to complete this survey and let us know how we can make this module better for you. Now you can practice scoring each measure.